So let's begin with the previous thing. Go ahead. Oh, you want me to see? Yeah, I don't know which prayers you say. Either. Oh, Everybody has their own prayers. Um, Oh, okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Om <laughs> <laughs> So we are reading today from chapter 15, text 20. Okay. I decide. Yes, please, Shri. Uh, I recite the full shloka or uh, just the way we do? Uh, you can recite the full shloka. Iti guya tamam shastram idam uktam mayanaga etra budva bhutti manasya krita krityascha bharata And then translation. Guru Maharaj, would you like me to read the translation or would you oh. like to read it? Go ahead. Translation. This is the most confidential part of the Vedic scriptures, O sinless one, and it is disclosed now by me. Whoever understands this will become wise, and his endeavors will know perfection. Uh, the, the purport, would you like me to read that, Guru Maharaj, or would you like to read it? Okay, I'll read it, yeah. Thank you. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, the Lord clearly explains here that this is the substance of all revealed scriptures. And one should understand this as it is given by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thus one will become intelligent and perfect in transcendental knowledge. In other words, by understanding this philosophy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and engaging in His transcendental service, everyone will become freed from all contaminations of the modes of material nature. Devotional service is a process of spiritual understanding. Wherever devotional service exists, the material contamination cannot exist. Devotional service to the Lord and the Lord Himself are one and the same because they are spiritual. Devotional service takes place within the internal energy of the Supreme Lord. The Lord is said to be the sum and sub substance. Oh, but the Lord is said to be the, the sun, and ignorance is called darkness. Where the sun is present, there is no question of darkness. Therefore, when, wherever devotional service is present, under the proper guidance of a bona fide spiritual master, there is no question of ignorance. All right, let, it's a long purport. Let's take it paragraph by paragraph. So we're hearing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Maharaj, my obeisance is all good. Uh, I think it would be nice if uh, Hemagri Prabhu could translate the purport in Hindi. Okay. If could read also. All right. Okay. I will just read. Hey Anagha, translation. Hey Anagha, ye Vedic Shastro ka Sarvadik Gupta Anshay. Jisse mene. 
जिसे मैंने अब प्रकट किया है जो कोई इसे समझना जो कोई इसे समझना है यह बुद्धिमान हो जाएगा और उसके और उसके प्रयास पूर्ण होंगे यू वॉन्ट मी टू रीड दर्पट ऑल्सो द फर्स्ट पैराग्राफ ओके मनोज तात्पर्य भगवान ये यह स्पष्ट किया है कि यदि सारे शास्त्रों का सार है और सारे शास्त्रों का सार है और भगवान ने इसे भगवान ने इसे जिस रूप में कहा है उसे उसी रूप में समझना समझना जाना चाहिए इस तरह इस तरह मनुष्य बुद्धिमान तथा दिव्य ज्ञान में पूर्ण हो जाएगा दूसरे शब्दों में भगवान के इस दर्शन को समझने तथा उसकी दिव्य सेवा में प्रयुक्त होने से प्रत्येक व्यक्ति प्रकृति के गुणों के समस्त कलमश से मुक्त हो सकता है भक्ति आध्यात्मिक ज्ञान की एक विधि है जहाँ भी भक्ति होती है वहाँ भौतिक कलमश नहीं रह सकता भगवत गीता तथा स्वयं भगवान एक है क्योंकि दोनों आध्यात्मिक है भक्ति परमेश्वर की अंतरंग शक्ति है शक्ति के भीतर होती भगवान सूर्य है सूर्य है सूर्य के समान है और अज्ञान अंधकार है जहाँ सूर्य विद्यमान है वहाँ अंधकार का प्रश्न ही नहीं उठता अतएव जब भी प्रामा जब भी प्रामाणिक गुरु के भगवत दर्शन के अंतर्गत भक्ति की जाती है तो अज्ञान का प्रश्न को नहीं होता Thank you, Prabhu. All right. So, Sri Prabhupada is referring to the point that uh, this knowledge is uh, the philosophical knowledge is an important part of devotional service. Sri Prabhupada is telling us how this knowledge. ये जो ज्ञान है वो आध्यात्मिक भाग है उसका समटाइम्स पीपल रॉन्गली अंडरस्टैंड द प्रोसेस ऑफ भक्ति जस्ट टू बी सम सेंटिमेंटल प्रोसेस वेयर पीपल सिंग एंड डांस बट दे हैव नो फिलोसॉफिकल अंडरस्टैंडिंग हां कभी-कभी लोग इसे मनोकल्पना समझते हैं क्योंकि वो देखते हैं कि हम लोग नाचते हैं गाते हैं तो उनको लगता है जैसे कि इसके पीछे कोई सिद्धांतिक बात नहीं है बट इन ऑर्डर टू प्रॉपरली परफॉर्म डिवोशनल सर्विस वन हैज टू हैव प्रॉपर नॉलेज लेकिन अगर सही सही भक्ति करनी चाहिए तो हमको सही ज्ञान भी होना चाहिए सो दिस नॉलेज ऑफ कोर्स वो कम From the guidance of the spiritual master. और ये ज्ञान हमको प्राप्त होता है गुरु के निर्देशन We were just praying at the beginning. Shilpa Maharaji said, "Om Magyana Tamarandasya, Gyananjana Shalakaya." That the spiritual master opens the eyes of the disciple because the eyes are blinded by ignorance. हमने शुरुआत में ही प्रार्थना की थी वो मध्यान कि गुरु हमारे आंखें आध्यात्मिक ज्ञान से खोले सो वेर देर इज प्रॉपर नॉलेज वेर देर इज प्रॉपर डिवोशन देर वुड बी ऑल्सो ज्ञान एंड वायरा दे ऑटोमेटिकली फॉलो वेर एवर देर इज जेन्यून भक्ति जहाँ कहीं भी भक्ति होगी वहाँ ज्ञान और वैराग्य अपने आप के उसके पीछे पीछे चल के आएगा So, Prabhupada gives an example. 
about the sun. Wherever there is sunlight, there can be no darkness. So Lord Krishna is compared to the sun and ignorance and compared to darkness. In the presence of Lord Krishna, there can be no ignorance. Right. What is that ignorance? Ignorance is identifying ourselves with the material body. We, are think, we, are, we, we think I am the material body and we think the country which I am born in is worshipable and we think that the, the, my family members are all in relation to my body. So this kind of consciousness that I am the body and the goal of my life is to satisfy my senses, this is called material consciousness and this consciousness is the root of ignorance. This is the influence of the material energy, the material energy made up of the modes of rajas and tamas, which pulls into the darkness. Under the influence of those modes, passion and ignorance, we cannot get any good situation in life. We, we, it's very difficult to take up devotional service when we're deeply rooted in passion and ignorance. And people are deeply rooted in passion and ignorance because of their strong material desires. Material desires are for the body that I want to enjoy, I want to give pleasure to my senses. Begin with the tongue. We like to eat all kinds of food and we like to drink different things and we like to say all kinds of bad words. So, of, of all the senses, the tongue is the most difficult to control. We have to, we have to conquer over the tongue. We have to train the tongue by being very careful what we eat and what we say. So we like to use the tongue to taste food offered to Krishna, meaning prasad. Krishna Prasad. 
and we will use the tongue also to recite the holy names of God and to read the Bhagavad Gita, to recite Bhagavad Gita. And we also use this life to recite the Bhagavad Gita and the Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna personally spoke these words of the Bhagavad Gita. So these words have a great potency which can save us from material life. Go ahead, read the next paragraph. Oh, I, I, will, I will read the English first, maybe. Yes, Mother. Everyone must take to this consciousness of Krishna and engage in devotional service to become intelligent and purified. Unless one comes to this position of understanding Krishna and engages in devotional service, however intelligent he may be in the estimation of some common man, he is not perfectly intelligent. इस कृष्ण भावनामृत को ग्रहण करें और बुद्धिमान तथा शुद्ध बनने के लिए भक्ति करें जब तक कोई कृष्ण को इस प्रकार नहीं समझता और भक्ति में प्रयुक्त नहीं होता तब तक सामान्य मनुष्य भी दृष्टि सामान्य मनुष्य की दृष्टि में कोई so someone may have studied a lot at university and acquired many degrees, so materially he seems to be very intelligent. But he may know nothing about the soul, and he has no knowledge about devotional service. So his knowledge is not good. If one simply has material knowledge, that, that is not the goal, of, that is not perfection of knowledge. Real knowledge is to understand who I am. The word anaga by which Arjuna is addressed is significant. Anaga, O oh sinless one, means that unless one is free from all sinful reactions, it is very difficult to understand Krishna. One has to become free from all contamination, all sinful activities. Then he can understand. But devotional service is so pure and potent that once one is entangled, once one is engaged in devotional service, he automatically comes to the stage of sinlessness. जिस अनघा शब्द में अनघा शब्द से अर्जुन को संबोधित किया गया है, वह सार्थक है। अनघा अर्थात् हे निष्पा का अर्थ हे निष्पा का अर्थ है कि जब तक मनुष्य समस्त पाप कर्मों से मुक्त नहीं हो जाता, तब जब तक कृष्ण को समझ so we should understand that why when we engage in devotional service it destroys our sinful reactions. 
हमको ये समझना होगा कि जब हम भक्ति में संलग्न होते हैं तो हमारे पाप कर्म नष्ट हो जाते हैं Yeah, we actually become sinless when we chant the Hare Krishna mantra, when we eat prasadam, when we worship Tosi and read the books about Krishna, destroys all of our sins. Even one time chanting the holy name can destroy so many sins. Of course, there has to be quality in the chanting, and then it will be effective. I'll read the last paragraph. While one is performing devotional service in the association of pure devotees in full Krishna consciousness, there are certain things which require to be vanquished altogether. The most important thing one has to surmount is weakness of the heart. The first fall down is caused by the desire to lord it over material nature. Thus one gives up the transcendental loving service of the Supreme Lord. The second weakness of the heart is that as one increases the propensity to lord it over material nature, he becomes attached to matter and the possession of matter. The problems of material existence are due to these weaknesses of the heart. In this chapter, the first five verses describe the process of freeing oneself from these weaknesses of heart, and the rest of the chapter, from the sixth verse through the end, discuss Purushottam Yoga. Shuddha Bhakto ko, Shuddha Bhakto ki sangati me rehkar, Purna Krishna Bhavna Amrit me bhakti karte huye, kuch कुछ बातों को बिल्कुल ही दूर कर देना चाहिए सबसे महत्वपूर्ण बात जिस पर जिस पर विजय पानी है वह है हृदय की दुर्बलता पहला पहला पतन प्रकृति पर प्रभुत्व जताने की इच्छा है के कारण होता है इस तरह मनुष्य भगवान की दिव्य प्रेम भक्ति को त्याग देता है दूसरा हृदय की दुर्बलता है कि है कि जब कोई आध्यात्मिक प्रभुत्व जताने की इच्छा करता है तो वह भौतिक पदार्थ के स्वामित्व की प्रति आसक्त आसक्त को आसक्त हो जाता है इस समय सॉरी इस संसार की सारी समस्याएं इन्हीं हृदय की दुर्बलताओं के कारण है इस इस अध्याय के प्रथम पांच श्लोकों में हृदय की इन्हीं दुर्बलताओं से अपने को मुक्त करने की विधि है विधि का वर्णन हुआ है और छठवें श्लोक से अध्यात्म से अंतिम श्लोक तक पुरुषोत्तम योग की विवेचना हुई है ओके सो यस दिस इज द फाइनल वर्स ऑफ द 15th चैप्टर 15th चैप्टर इज पुरुषोत्तम योगा और द योगा ऑफ द सुप्रीम पर्सन and so Prabhupada is describing the, the structure of this 15th chapter. The first five verses were about the weakness of the heart. And Prabhupada discusses the two, two different weaknesses of the heart. 
First one, the desire to be the controller, to take possession of things of the material world. We stop being the servant and instead we think we're the master. And then the second weakness of heart, we become very attached to the material things. And we never have enough, we always want more, we want to increase everything. So because of this consciousness, because of this mentality, so many problems are coming in our life. We are thinking, this belongs to me. Actually, nothing belongs to me. Everything belongs to God. Everything is meant for the service of the Lord. But we are thinking everything is meant for my pleasure, for my enjoyment. So the first five verses are describing like this, the, the weakness of the heart. And then the other verses are about Purushottam Yoga. Yeah, we heard about how Lord Krishna is maintaining everything. We heard how he is uh, the super soul in every living entity's heart. And from him comes knowledge and remembrance and forgetfulness. And we heard that the purpose of the Vedas is to know the Supreme. So this is the main points which are here in this 15th chapter, a short chapter, only 20 slokas. This final section of the Bhagavad Gita is concentrate, focusing more on spiritual knowledge, helping us to understand more. So there are three modes of nature, goodness, passion and ignorance. And we are controlled through this material nature. Sometimes we act in a good way, sometimes in a passionate way and sometimes in an ignorant way. In the beginning of the 15th chapter, Lord Krishna had compared the material world to the reflection of a tree. And the, the, the reflected tree has the roots up and the branches down. And 
जो शाखाएं हैं वो नीचे की तरफ है और जो मूल है वो ऊपर की तरफ and the tree is very big it's very difficult for for all of us we are situated in this tree and we're trying to get free we're trying to get out of this tree so in order to get out we have to have an axe and we have to have a sharp axe and this axe is sharpened with detachment. The more we cultivate detachment from the material senses. Sense, sense gratification cannot be stopped, but it can be purified. We, instead of having sense gratification just simply for the body, our sense gratification can be in relation to Krishna. So we cannot stop things like eating, we have to eat. So eat Krishna Prasada. And we have to sleep, we need rest, we have to sleep. So take rest so that you can do service for Krishna. So all of our activities can be dovetailed, can be changed. Instead of thinking only for my pleasure, we do them for Krishna's pleasure. This is the weakness of the heart that we want to enjoy without Krishna. Okay, are there any questions? Anyone has any comment? One request, Maharaj, if you could just lift your camera so we can see your lotus like face. Well, I've got it up, we're on the screensaver, you know, I'm looking at the screen. Ah, okay, now, now, now we can see. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, any questions? Anything you don't understand? Anything I like... just want to ask one thing, Maharaj. Like yes? Sometimes when we go out, I know we always try to eat the prasadam, but sometimes, like, because I'm still in the material world, and sometimes there are chances that I go out. So how should I eat that prasadam at that time? What should I do then? Well... So my question is that we well, it depends on what level you want to practice. If you want to practice very strictly the, the idea of just eating pusada, then you could take food with you. Instead of eating food which other people have cooked, you bring your own food with you. Or else, you, you, you naturally have to tell the, you have to tell the, when you're coming to a program, you want to ask, you want vegetarian food. And you should, you should tell them, I want the, 
the Vaishnava food, which, which means that I don't take onion and garlic. It's not so different from Buddhism or from Jainism. I think both in Buddhism, Buddhism and Jainism, they also don't take onion and garlic and they're strictly vegetarian. So it's not an uncommon thing. If you're in a place like Taiwan, for example, there's so many Buddhists there, they don't take onion and garlic. They are also strict vegetarian. So you simply have to explain like that, that, you know, I'm practicing something, you could say Indian Buddhism. I'm an Indian Buddhist. <laughs> Actually, you, you are practicing Vaishnavism. Right. Vaishnavism is well known in India, especially in South India. And in Gujarat, Rajasthan, these places, they're all, you know, they're very well known to be vegetarian. They won't take onion and garlic. So you just have to be a little determined in the beginning. Maybe you're not used to it in the beginning, but after some time, it becomes natural that you just simply explain, oh, I don't eat this food, I can't eat this food, I'm a vegetarian. So, uh, Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. And when they have, when they have tea yeah. or coffee or drinks, then you could just you could ask that you could say, do you have any fruit juice? Ask them for some lemon juice or some fruit juice. Hmm. Hmm. You can ask them, do you, could I have a glass of milk? It's, you know, there are more and more people becoming vegetarian. Now, of course, of course, you have vegan, and there are a good number of vegans in the world. It's become very popular around the world. So many people have taken up veganism, they don't take any animal products, and so they won't take any milk, they won't even take honey. So you, you, you find that many restaurants nowadays, they will also advertise that we cater for vegans also, we have a special vegan menu. And so that's vegetarian food. And you can offer it in your mind. When they bring you a plate, you know, you, within your mind, you can simply pray to Krishna and chant the holy name of Krishna in your mind. 
and in this way offer the food to Krishna and your food becomes prasadam. Now if you're going in airplanes and you go on a long flight, then you can also order a Jain meal. They have Jain meals also in the flights. Or you could ask for a vegan meal and tell them you're a vegan, that they will know about that. It's so common. So it takes a little practice in the beginning with, you know, it's a little, maybe you're not used to it in the beginning, but after some time it becomes natural and you, you're careful to avoid the food which is cooked by non-devotees. Ideally, you know, we want to have food which is cooked by a devotee. If you have somebody who's not a devotee cooking, then you also take some of the karma. But the person is not a devotee, so he has karma. And you have to, you, you take some. Okay, any other question? Uh, Maharaj, yes. uh, actually you just said that uh, one should be practice the detachment. But being in the grasth jivan, it is very difficult to detach. So how to deal with it? Well, being in the Grihastha Ashram, you have to be detached. You have to learn, you can't always get things the way you want them. Being in the Grihastha Ashram means you're sharing your life with other people. So you have to become a little detached in order to keep the family together and to keep the home harmony and harmony and happy, you have to be detached. But the, the point is that detachment follows wherever there's devotion. If you do devotion, if you practice bhakti yoga, the detachment naturally follows without even thinking about it. Hmm. When when we be the more we become attached to bhakti, the less we, we the less we are concerned with the material things. Because you like to go to temple, 
because you like to take part in the program in the temple. So you don't often go out to, you may not go to the movie, and you'd rather say, no, I'm going to temple, I don't want to go to movie. And when they come and offer drinks and cigarettes and things, it's not hard to say no because these things are not attractive. One who's got bhakti, who's got devotion, he's not attracted to alcohol and cigarettes. He thinks these are horrible things. So, it, it's developing the taste. It's just like developing a taste, you know. As, as we develop a taste for, for one thing, we lose the taste for the other thing. If you have a taste to chant Hare Krishna, to read the Bhagavad Gita, you may not have the same taste to go partying and to go drinking. Yeah, we have to think about what's our goal in life, where are we going? Where are we going at the end of this life? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, life is not finished with death. We are all eternal souls. We have to understand. We have a future. Even after we give up this body, we will take birth again. So we have to be thinking also about the next life. Where do you want to go from here? After this life, where are, you, where are you hoping to go? What's your destination? Some people say, oh, I don't care, it doesn't matter to me, I don't mind. I may become a dog, I may become a, a cow, I may become a tree, I may become a deva. So you have to think. Do you, are you worried? Are you thinking about the next life? Where are you going to go? Just like children, that when they go to school, you may tell your children, you know, try hard, do well in your exams, we want you to do well.
If you do well in your exams, you'll have a good future, will be better for your future. So the same way, the things we do in this life will affect our future, our future life. So we have to think about this. There was a great king, Bharat Maharaj. Bharat Maharaj retired. He left everything to go to Himalayas. But then he, he had a problem. And he became a deer in the next life. So he he regretted, he'd made some mistake, you see, he lost his place, he lost, he forgot his meditation and he ended up becoming a deer. So he had to take birth, two more births. So I have to be careful. Okay. Any other? Thank you, Guru. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Guru Mahat. Hare Krishna. Any other question? Okay. So, thank you very much, Himagiri Prabhu, for translation. So I'll leave you with it. I have to do some things. I have to get ready. I have another program. So thank you very much. Very nice to meet all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.